This is the Action Movie Guys Podcast. Bringing you action movie reviews from across the decades. Plus box office numbers and insight like never before. And now your hosts of the Action Movie Guys Podcast, Alex and Nate. Welcome everyone to a brand new episode of the Action Movie Guys podcast. Now this is episode 193, Predator from 1987. I'm your host Alex Figueroa. My co-host is Nate from Nate Flix Reviews. All right, so we're starting a brand new franchise. Now we're jumping into the Predator franchise. Now we're not doing the Prey because we already did that live. We did a live review on it, but we're going to do the other uh, films that came out. So we're going to do Predator. We're going to do Predator 2, Predators. And then the Predator. And mm-hmm. that's it. We're not doing Aliens versus Predator or Alien versus no. Predator at Requiem. Those are different, uh, maybe down the line, but not right now. So with that said, Nate, how long has it been since you've seen 1987 Predator? Well, fun fact, this came out the same year as me, 1987. So we're the mm. same age, me and this movie. And I haven't, I don't watch Predator very much, but it's one of those movies that like I just remember every time I watch it, I remember all the parts. I mean, it's been years since I've seen it. Honestly, the first time I saw it, I was 10 years old. I'll never forget. I was 10 years old. It was in a, one of my cousin's house in New York, and I was scared because of the the skinned alive bodies scared yeah. me. But I was like also mesmerized and watched the whole entire movie. And then I've seen it a few times since. So I can't even pinpoint the last time I watched it. But when watching it, it was like riding a bike. Like, well, I remember all these parts. So it's been a while, but it's no big deal. Yeah, when it comes to Predator, this is my joint. I haven't seen this one in a while, though, but I always watch it here and there on TV. It doesn't bother me. This movie, when I first saw it, is when I was, like, young. I mean, RoboCop had to be, like, one of my first movies to see with my dad and stuff, but this one came after, because this one, I I gravitated to it because it's my favorite. And, of course, Arnold, then I fell in love with action movies and sci-fi action grew for me. But with that said, let's check out what the audience and critics have to say about Predator from 1987. What's the scores? Yeah, so they're pretty good, especially for an action movie. And I read Ooh. on the Wikipedia page, apparently when this movie came out, the reviews were not good. However, over time, it has been revered. And this has an 80% as far as the critics review. So I think over time, as more people uh, reviewed it and critics reviewed it, it did gain a better following and audience scores an 87%. So very highly reviewed oh, from both critics and audiences. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's perfect. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's where you want a movie to be. Is in the, For an in those... action film. This yeah. is about as pure of an action movie as you can get and it has very yeah. high scores. Yeah, I like it. This is, this is actually pretty good and I kind of see, I mean, I was, I'll lean more towards the 90s, but it's okay. I like it though. It's close to 93% almost uh, to the 98 for the audience. I love it. Great. Now let's go right into the movie, the main movie review. Let's start with my man Dutch Arnold Schwarzenegger, lead character, Nate. This is, you know, <laughs> we don't even, do we have to even ask what the score is going to be on a couple no. of these categories? Uh, it's a five. This is an action, you know, and I'm really, this is an easy movie to watch through the lens of an action film. You know, we every movie we watch, sometimes they have less action than others, but we have to filter it through the action lens. So sometimes it lowers the score because it's like, okay, but this is, you know, an action movie. It doesn't have, this is an easy review because this is an action film and Dutch is an action movie character. He's a military guy. He is, uh, he was in the Vietnam War. He's a Vietnam War vet. He's absolutely jacked like beyond belief Arnold looks amazing in this movie first of all his whole look is great the short hair the the little stubble he's absolutely jacked the scene when they're in the forest and they're like when predator they they've encountered him but they haven't like you know full yeah. on fought him and it's not him and he has like just the vest with no shirt on underneath I'm like this guy is just he looks like an action figure he, he doesn't look yeah. human also he has great camaraderie with the other guys his group with Carl Weathers they get into a little bit now they're old friends they give the greatest high five of all time where they just grip each other's hand and it just shows their biceps and they start arm wrestling in the air which I always thought was weird like there's no table but they're somehow arm wrestling it's hilarious and you can tell they have a camaraderie but then they get into it a little bit listen Arnold is not winning any Oscars anytime soon but this is a vehicle that is perfect for his talents his charisma he has some great one-liners in this movie well a lot of good one-liners you know so it just it's a it's just like a this is really a role taylor made i think between this and terminator they're like his two best like roles that are just made for his skill set so i give him a five and I like Dutch is great. Like he's a guy you root for through the whole movie. Like there's, he's not a bad dude. There's no reason for you to want him to die. So I think that's a big success. Five out of five. Oh, I mean, dude, hands down. The movie started and I said five. 
<laughs> when you have the character sitting in a helicopter and all you see is the silhouette with a cigar, you already knew it was a five. He didn't even say nothing. You go, damn, this dude's a five. <laughs> you already knew he was badass before he became badass. But you're right. I mean, when he meets, I mean, when he meets Carl Weather, it is, yeah, you're right. It's the best hand five ever. He's like, Dylan, <laughs> you son of a bitch. <laughs> and they, <laughs> yeah. It's so great. Yeah, I loved it. You're right. I mean, I'm, you elaborated on everything. All I'm just going to attach to is that you're right. The group of guys around him, I was going to talk about the group of guys because you didn't yeah, touch yeah. on him. Jesse Ventura was amazing in this movie. He's not a five character, but no. he is a five character. I mean, it's just yeah. one of those dudes that he, he's just chewing tobacco. He gets shot. This will make you a sexual of- Tyrannosaurus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, uh, yeah, like yeah. each of the character was so like they worked so well and the script actually developed those characters very well. Like you didn't know much about them, but you knew enough about them to care about them towards the end of the movie. Once they start to get picked off, you know, like, oh, man, that kind of sucks. Right. Like Billy yeah. Dukes and Jesse Ventura were together for a long time because you saw how it affected Billy Dukes' character. Right. Yeah. Uh, Mac. <laughs> That's all I remember. Right, yeah, I couldn't hear Mac. that thing, that clip you always play. I'm going to yeah. have me some fun. That's I'm going to have me some fun. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's my joy. Yeah. yeah I'm going to have me some fun. <laughs> yeah. I mean, <laughs> then you got Carl Weathers and then you got Shane Black's character. But they all had a big part of the film without being the lead character into the film. And I right. like that. It felt very 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 unified i mean like the script was so tight when it came to those characters together even carl weathers not part of the team but towards the end he was part of the team trying to take down the predator and i liked it it was very cool but my man arnold bro you're right he has all these one-liners he picks up a damn truck he's (laughs) ah and he throws it down the hill with a bomb in it and i was like man you can't even go wrong but honestly all in all arnold is this movie of course he is the star leading this but you're right i mean the two characters that you really think of. I mean, I know everyone's going to say kindergarten cop, you know, uh, last action hero attached to Arnold, but you're absolutely right. I think his main, oh yeah, Conan, but his main action character is Dutch and uh, and T-800. It yeah. is the main two for me. I mean, he looks great. Even when he's in the mud and he comes out, he's all jacked. <laughs> right. To and me, then, it's, like, it's like Stallone, right? He has yeah. a bunch of good roles, but he's Rocky and he's Rambo. To me, right. Arnold Schwarzenegger is Dutch and he's the T-800. And then he has a bunch yeah. of other good roles that are solid. Those are the ones. I, I'll tell you, I mean, I know a lot of people, we have a lot of memorable moments in the movie. My memorable moment, one of them, is when Dutch is in full mud gear and he's just yelling. He's like, Aah! he yells back at the predator. I was like, yo, this yeah. dude is calling out the alien. Like, my man, I'm about to whip that ass. Somewhere, somehow, I'm going to bring you down. And I loved it. I said, that's cool. And that's a five here on the Action Movie Guys podcast. Now, main villain. Oh, my God. The well, listen, predator, the most iconic character ever made. Yeah, yeah, if there's another lead character in this movie, it's the predator. To be honest with yeah. you, like this is a, a one of the best creature designs that there ever was on film in all of film. I think it rivals any of the old like Universal monster films, like Creature from the Black Lagoon or Dracula, Frankenstein. You know, like these are these are characters that you put up on a screen and people know who they are even if they haven't seen all the movies. And to me, the Predator is one of those characters. You put the Predator up, I would say 95% of people are going to say, that's the Predator. Uh, Have you seen all the Predators? No, but I know that's the Predator. It's that good. Stan Winston, you know, just as far as a character design, flawless. Now, as far as a character, I mean, one of the best, (laughs) one of the best villains. I mean, it's a villain in the sense that it's killing people, but like, it's an alien, from another place that's coming to hunt. I mean, humans hunt deer, right? To a deer, like we're predators. So are we villains? I don't, to the deer we are. So to the people, this thing's a villain, but on its planet, it's probably just some guy named Phil. You know, I don't know. So <laughs> predator <laughs> predator is Phil. Phil. That's Phil. The Phil came down. He was ready. He was ready. Phil is ready to kill. Yeah, I, I think the, the predator is like legendary. Yeah. Got the, he has all the gadgets. He got the green blood. He got just uh, he's he's ruthless. He skins people alive. He goes through these people like they're nothing. Now he has advantages. He got advanced technology. He got thermal vision. He got invincibility, like invisibility. You know, but you saw what happened when they went straight up. I don't know. Dutch had some skills on the predator. So even still, the, his body count is impressive. He doesn't need to talk, even though he can do like the mimic thing with the voices and stuff. Yeah, doesn't need to talk. He just is to me. 
one of the greatest screen villains or creatures of all time. Five. Oh, dude. All I got to say is five for villain. I mean, there's nothing you could say. And and what makes this movie super special, and, and I know it's 80s and all this baloney and whatever. What makes this movie so special is when he's invisible. Because honestly, when you're watching the movie, you're like, what the hell are they shooting at? We really know. I mean, once you watch the movie thousands of times, you already know. But when you watch it the first time and you go, what are they shooting at? And then next thing you know, Carl Weathers look up and you see him hanging on the tree and he goes, bling, bling, bling. And then his, actually, no, when his entire uh, camera shows goes off for like quick, one second yeah. and then he goes back away. And I said, yo, you asses are getting whoop, like in two <laughs> seconds, bro. And I loved it. And that's the cool thing about movies where even the suspense, just that little camouflage shutting off for like a millisecond and coming back on, you mm. went, oh, these motherfuckers are toast. Like they are not coming back. And I loved it. And I was like, that's cool. Even when Billy Dukes saw him from a distance and you saw the green eyes pop. And I said, oh, boy, you're done, dude. Like, yeah. and that's cool. And I loved it. I was like, oh, man. And then you got the other scene. Carl Weathers is, like, shooting. And my man is spinning. And he's like, shing. Yeah. <laughs> and he just jigs him. And I said, yep. yo, that scene, John Tiernan, okay, the director, has to be, like, when he thought out of that scene right there, it was, like, genius. Because the camera just pans back and you just see uh, uh, him just running in a circle. Going, yep. man, you are toast with one arm. Bro, like you are done. And when you saw the two shish kebab sticks, I was like, you are done. <laughs> like <laughs> the it was over. The yeah. shish kebabers, bro. And I loved it. Like you didn't get full gadgets like part two, where you see the the staff, you see the you know the famous um whining gate thing of Majiggy where he throws the the yeah. trap thing. This is was just pure knife gun camo. And, of yeah. course, thermo, but whatever. But it was just, I loved it because it was just so raw Predator. And and then, of course, the ending when it was just Predator versus Arnold, he was like, oh, you want to go one-on-one? All right, we're going to take all my shit off, and we're going to duke it out. Yes. And Arnold almost lost. And I loved it. And I was yeah. like, this is what I'm talking about. And it was cool. I gave it a five. I mean, the advantage of the guy who plays him, I forgot his name is Hall something. Tall mm. guy, African guy, he was a big dude. And yeah. I and I love the size difference because he was taller than than Arnold. And I was like, yo, that was and that scene in the tree, when he put him against the tree, you went, Oh, he's done. Like he, he had him. Didn't was they like, originally try to get like Van Damme to do No, the Van Damme was the predator. He kept passing out in the prosthetics right. and then he quit. And he changed it, yeah. Yeah. So he looked I mean, like a big they, manta. Imagine if Predator did like a freaking wheel kick or something like that. Though. Oh, the spinning <laughs> kick? Yeah, yeah. he just did like a flying <laughs> kick. Yeah, or a split. That would be so sick. All of a sudden, you hear him go. He goes, and he yeah. goes, do you like to challenge? <laughs> you want to challenge me? Would he, Predator would have had a, a, a an accent. That would have been hilarious. Yeah. You like to challenge me? <laughs> Heck yeah. Challenge. Sign me up for that. Oh, I know you would love that shit if he would say challenge. Um, all right. So with that, look, five across the board, action scenes. <laughs> look, I am not trying to sit here. And sound like a broken record. Yeah. But this is as pure of an action film as any we've reviewed on this podcast. I can't believe it's taken us 193 episodes to get to it, but we finally got to it. The action scenes are plentiful. They are extremely, like you said, John McTiernan, extremely well executed, extremely well thought out, bloody. The best part is rated R. She's got yeah. blood spraying. You get skinned bodies. You get, I mean, just, you get everything. Even that, even that, like, when that dude, when they come to the base and the dude shoots the other guy in the head, like, it's graphic. Like, oh, yeah. It's, it's violent. Just the people on people, you know, actions or action scenes. So, like, I think you get a little bit of everything. I, I, I've always said it. I'm not crazy with guns, but this is cool because it's a, it, it's big, huge guns that lead to like big explosions. It's not just like handguns and, you know, yeah. a couple of machine guns. So I love it. Got the minigun in here. The minigun's awesome. Once they show it, it's like, that's going to be something awesome that I'm going to like later. And then on top of that, you get you get Predator and, and Dutch going full primal. And then the action's totally different. Now we're no longer with all giant guns and all everything. It's a little more stripped down. 
But, uh, and you know, he, he, Carl Weathers lays the line early in the movie when Dutch is trying to do that. He's like, oh, we're going to use the Boy Scout, uh, you know, the Boy Scout, whatever. And it's like, well, that will come in handy later when he uses his booby traps and things like that. You know yeah. what I mean? So I just think it has everything. It's pretty constant. There's, it's just, this movie's just like, it's a little bit of talking and then action and then a little bit of talking and then action and then a little bit of talking and then action. Like that's, that's the, the format. The action gets a five for me. It's, it's brutal. If this was somehow PG-13, it would get a lower a f- it would get a four and a half but because they went full gore for this is like a horror movie l- level of gore but with action movie pieces set pieces so i love it it's great five yeah i mean look i'm just gonna say it's a five i mean i agree with everything you said all i will say is this pretty much the action sequences felt natural throughout the movie john McTierian again did a great job with the action sequences it made you feel like you're part of the movie. And then when you're in predator mode, I love that you were in predator mode. Like he gave the audience the vision of you in the predator suit. When he gives you the thermo, you get to see that. You're like, oh, I like this view. So I kind of like how he bounces between the the fourth dimension, if that's the actual term for it, where you go from the predator. First person, yes. Yes, the first person view of the predator attacking them, and then you see it vice versa. I thought Mm -hmm. that worked very well. The body's hanging. I said, oh, my God, this is crazy. My man, uh, the Indian guy, Billy, Yeah, he was cool. He was like, I don't know, Major. <laughs> he was like, yeah, yeah. we all gonna die. And I was like, oh, no, Billy. If nothing scares you, Billy. <laughs> yeah. I really do. Like, nothing scares you. But I, I, I agree with you. I mean, the action sequences, I think it's the, the heart and soul of this film, besides Arnold and Predator. But I think it is what elevates, you're right, from the action to primal to explosion. Because yeah. you get that big explosion at the end when he, he does the little doo 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 doo. And then it was just yep. he plays a little nuclear arm piano. bomb, yep. yeah. <laughs> piano. <laughs> oh my god. Bing, 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 bing. Piano. Yeah. bing, 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 bing. But yeah, no, other than that, yeah, it's a five across the board there. I agree with you. All right, storyline. All right. Now, if there's one thing that there's only one thing I would change about this storyline, because to me, once again, the storyline it fits perfect for the movie. But the only thing, and this is something that I've I didn't care for like early on, but the more I see it just because of the way the movie plays out, I wish the very beginning was different. I wish they didn't show the alien ship dropping off the predator Uh, on earth. Yeah. I wish it just started with Dutch coming. Imagine this. Imagine this. You go into this movie. There's no alien ship. And you Dutch. And then he meets these people and they get the mission. You guys got to go save this group of, you know, hostages, yeah. whatever. Okay, we're going to South America. Then they discover those bodies. And they're like, what the hell? What is going on here? This is crazy. And then you, you know, you keep going in and then they fight and they do all this stuff. And then, then stuff starts randomly, like people get killed, right? Invisible. And then you're, then you're really like, what the hell is, what is happening? I think the fact that they show the ship, you ex- assume that it's the alien, Right. Even though you don't see it all the way. And I just think the movie would have been even better if it was super random. Like it just came out of nowhere. Like Dusk Till Dawn. Right. From Dusk Till Dawn, where you you have no idea. If you don't tell your friend that it's a vampire movie, you will not think that's a vampire movie until all of a sudden the vampires show up. You know what I mean? And this could have been like that, where like the alien just shows up and you're like, what? This is an alien movie. And now I love it. I still love it anyway. I'm not going to mark off for that. It's just the only thing I would change. Other than that, this got a great action movie storyline. I mean, you get the mission, you get the military stuff, you get the camaraderie. You get that mission. Then you got the, it's actually a different mission. A little bit, what's the word? Tropey, right? Like there's other movies that have that same kind of thing. Like we thought we were doing one thing and now we're doing something else. And then I'm, you betrayed me. And then they get mad. But throwing the predator in adds a different layer where they can't really sit here and fight about it for too long because they will get killed by this thing. So yeah. they got to kind of work through it anyway. A five. I don't, it, that my little gripe is not a flaw. It's just a preference that I wish they did. It's there's, I have no problems <clears throat> with this storyline. I can't can't think of anything I would change other than just removing a 15 second scene at the beginning. You know, I, I agree with you. If they did remove that, that would be a, it would have been interesting to see it that way. I gotta say, I gave this a five. There's a reason why I gave it a five. I love the reasons what you said it does make sense a lot. My reasoning, cause I don't want people to be like, Oh, it's automatic because this is one of your favorite movies. Okay. You want to be biased with that? I'll say, all right, fine. But this is exactly why I'm going to give the storyline a five. Is there flaws? Absolutely, there's flaws. But for me, this movie feels like two movies in one. And this is why. 
When the movie starts off, it starts off like an army movie. Like you're watching Street Saving Private Ryan style of movie, right? You don't know that this isn't a sci-fi movie from the get-go. Dudes are in the helicopter. You hear my man, Little Richie. <laughs> right? Like you're like, holy hell. And then you see them talking to each other. They're talking about the mission. I mean, within 30 minutes to 40 minutes is a straight army movie. Okay, with a yep. little hint that they're giving you a Predators here. But other than that, that is straight a different type of movie. Now, once Arnold conquers what he did and they destroyed that little village, the movie just became a full-blown sci-fi horror movie once the Predator yeah. interjected. And that's the reason why I'm giving it a five because i never seen a movie till now, 2021, that gives you two movie styles starting with a, brand, a, a fresh, different movie and then it ends in a totally different direction that the movie started from. i never seen a movie like that till now. And I maybe I could be wrong. Someone could DM me. Maybe they'll hold, check this movie out or something. But i never seen a movie went from a, a full-fledged army action movie and then it ends with a sci-fi horror action movie like yeah. straight up with a perfect blend between both worlds and I think to me that was genius and I had to give that a five regardless of what flaws are here and there there is no way you could tell me that that was a horrible way to go because you got sucked in the minute the movie started you go oh man yeah. they gotta go get POWs halfway through the jungle it's a damn mystery now because dudes are skinned alive my man Dutch is like is this the team that you brought in and he goes oh Green Berets and all this shit. And I'm like, holy hell, like it's like a mister murder mystery slash the sci-fi horror slash army movie drama, whatever you want to call it. To right. me, I thought it was perfect. I gave it a five. Which by the way, the argument of like if someone's like, Well, you're gonna give it a five because it's your favorite movie. Well, there's a reason it's my favorite movie. And it's because yeah. I feel this way about the story. So that doesn't even hold water. It's a five. It's not even one of my I don't even rank it in my top like ten movies, and I still gave it a five. So but I question, do you. you feel when you watched it on this review? watched did you feel two genres that's from exactly to what end? i was saying that that's yeah. why i wish they left the spaceship out because yeah. then it's like even more like this does not you, you do not get a hint that this is a sci-fi horror monster movie it's a monster movie at the end of the day yeah. you don't even get that if you take out the spaceship scene so if they no. did like an edit where they literally just remove that <laughs> it would be even more what you're describing as is it still yeah. is i agree with you 100 percent. yeah all right here we go overall well i'm not gonna sit here and give everything a five and then give the overall a three right i mean that doesn't make any sense uh no to me it is a perfect action film we are scoring action films would i say that it has like the greatest acting of all time no it does not it has good acting though bill duke's good in this car weather's good i mean these are jesse ventura like you said is good uh shane black is funny he's like the comedic relief you know yeah. um but this is an action movie so i don't expect the acting if you can get an action movie with amazing acting great but if you don't it's okay if everything else is perfect and to me Everything else is perfect. The score, we didn't even talk about the music. Mm. Alan Silvestri's score is great. It's Off really, really, really good. You could like, it's like one of those action movie scores that's memorable, which I feel like a lot of action movies don't have super memorable musical scores. This one does. So Alan Silvestri's score is great. John McTiernan's direction is great. What was funny though, was you could see, especially in 4K, some of the effects, they're good. Don't get me wrong. I, the, well, first of all, the creature design still looks amazing. The yeah. invisible, the invisibility, it still works for the most part part it, it's you know there's only one way you can do that now what was funny was their scene where the girl is sitting on the floor and she has the green blood on her and you could see that the green blood is not like it's not on her it's like a digital overlay it's like in camera effect so like at one yeah. point it moves a little bit and it cracked me up i was like wait a second that there's not <laughs> nothing on her it's just a green <laughs> patch that they added in 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 the camera it's okay I, it's not a big deal it's fine but that made me laugh but what am i this is a perfect action movie it's a perfect action movie there's a handful of these to me i mean i gave terminator this terminator 2 this same score and that is one of my favorite movies i think this to to me and i don't know if it's the same I, it might be the same for you because you said it's one of your favorites but <clears throat> to me this goes on the mount rushmore of action films to me if you had to pick four you know for me terminator 2 is up there i think die hard is up there like i just think it's and i think predator i'd have to think about the fourth one but predator would be the third one to me i think there's nothing wrong with it i love watching it again i've seen it so many times that i don't know how many times or when's the last time i watched it but it's a fantastic movie it's great if you like sci-fi if you like horror if you like action if you like any of those genres you can dig this movie and it's really fun so five for me yeah i mean look i'm, I'm jumping on board uh it's a five 
I, I know, it, it, honestly, there's nothing wrong with this movie. From beginning to end, you're entertained. There's tons of action. You fall in love with all the characters, which is rare. You, normally, there's only one, but you fall in love with all five of them, right? Even Carl Weathers, he's a dick, but you still like the character. Yeah. Then you got the Predator, which you even fall in love. You're like, holy crap, this dude is like so badass. He's amazing. Like, there's nothing more within this script. You're, oh, my God, the soundtrack oh, on Adobe Atmos is like sick, right? Yeah. When, and then even when it kicks in, because that's like the Predator theme, right? The dun, 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 yeah, yeah. And I was like, oh, man. And it's so cool because even when I remember playing the video game and that came out. And I was like, oh, my God. I was like, this is like you feel you're immersed. Like mm-hmm. when you have a great sound track that attaches to a film franchise and you hear it on screen, you're going, oh, shit. Like this is this dude coming on. Just like RoboCop. Mm-hmm. RoboCop oh, has yeah. that theme song. You already know that this is RoboCop. Um, Indiana Jones has Indiana Jones. Superman has Superman. Batman has 20,000 of them, but each of them has their own different styles to those characters. So with the Predator, I mean, it's a five, man. It's, I, I can't think of anything wrong with this and you movie. you know what's even it's a, the it's best so part about it? It's only an hour and 40 minutes. Yes. It's not and it's fast. two hours, two and a half hours. Three. No, 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 no. They made two whole movies in an hour and 40 minutes, and they're both great. I will say this, though. I wish John McTiernan came back to do a sequel. Or even nice. now. I mean, he hasn't directed anything in years. I know he went to jail or something for taxes or something like oh. that. I don't know. But if Wesley Snipes can come back, John McTiernan can McTiernan. come back. Yeah. Hey, his first project should be Predator. <laughs> Predator 3. They should just yes. pretend like the other one didn't happen and call it Predator 3. <laughs> it comes in the same time. Danny right. Glover you know and Arnold movie. come back. Yeah. Oh, my God. Together? <laughs> hey, Gary <laughs> Busey. Oh, oh my Lord. God. That would be hilarious. That would be hilarious. I might hey, watch how it. you doing there? Who are you? I'm Dutch. <laughs> I'm old ass Dutch. <laughs> and then, you and Danny night. Glover's in a wheelchair. Oh my He's gotta god! Gotta be in a wheelchair. I think he can't he even walk anymore. To be. I don't know. Yeah. Oh my god. No, but other than that, that's pretty much it. What's your total score? <laughs> twenty-five. Only, only the second twenty-five that I've ever given on this show. I think I don't. I know I put Die Hard on the Mount Rushmore, but I didn't even give that a twenty-five. I still think yeah. it belongs up there. But flawless, fantastic, twenty-five. Yeah, look, I gave it a twenty-five. This is my my. Third or fourth, because I know John Wick one I gave a 25, I believe. Mm-hmm. Terminator I did. There was an- another one I gave a 25, but then this one is the next one. So I think this is my fourth 25 in, out of all 193 episodes that we did. This is only and the second one that so. me and you both gave. Yeah. Yeah, back to back. Yeah, that's right. That's pretty much true. Um, but all right. Other than that, Nate, what is coming up next? All right. So coming up next, we got, of course, we are moving on with our Liam Neeson month. We got another collaboration between Liam Neeson and my boy, Jaume, as I like to call him, Jaume. Jaume. I would never say his name right. He's Jaume to me. I love it. All caps, Jaume. Uh, Jaume. Run All Night was a first time watch. Well, these are all first time watches for you at this point. Yeah, um, so we're going to be reviewing that. And then next week, we continue on with the Predator franchise, of course, with Predator 2, which fun fact, I have never seen as an adult. I have only watched this movie when I was like that same trip where I saw Predator 1. I saw Predator 2. So I was about 10 years old when I watched it. And I remember not liking it because they were not in the jungle. There was no Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> so like everything that I liked about the first yeah. one, besides Predator, wasn't there. So this is almost a first time watch for me. I haven't okay. seen it in 20, 25 years or something like that. So should be interesting. It's going to be interesting. <laughs> and, and, and the funny thing is, is that what, what got me so mad about Predator 2 is that the only way to buy the stupid box set is because it, I brought it is because Predator 2 only came on that oh, that's true. Predator it box set. It still hasn't gotten its own release. It has never got the release because I would have brought it just for the artwork. I love the you know, artwork of Predator. Fox, so you know it's never going to happen. Never, this is it. Yeah. Just hold Actually, on to your box set. Bullcrap. They have it in Germany though. Predator 2. Or, imp- or can import it. But you already have it. I, I'm so. the king import. But I, I wouldn't yeah. do that. Though. Double 12. Uh, double 15 on this one. Double, double 15. 15. <laughs> <laughs> no, but other than that, um, if you guys want to follow us on our social media accounts, please follow Nate over on Instagram at Netflix Reviews. Check out the podcast with him and his friends called Netflix Movie Reviews. Anything action movie, guys. Head over to YouTube.com slash Geeks and Flicks for the video version of the podcast or our official website at www.geeksandflicks.com. Join the Patreon. Watch the behind the scenes of your favorite podcast episodes being filmed. Other than that, I'm your host, Alex Figueroa, and that is Nate from Netflix Reviews. Be awesome to each other and geek out. (laughs) 